UCLA had won its fifth consecutive national championship. It's a record which appears virtually unbreakable. John Wooden's style of play was being executed in textbook fashion. And John Wooden will close one of collegiate sports' most outstanding careers with his 10th championship in 12 years. John Wooden, perhaps the most famous basketball coach that will ever have lived, all right? He's won 10 NCAA championships in 12 years and won 88 games in a row and has been called the coach of the century for the 1900s. And how has he left his legacy? By writing books on his leadership style and why he was able to stand out above any other coach and have the highest winning streak of any basketball coach in the history of the world. He has a coaching philosophy that is massively different than that of any other coach or leader that I have seen. He takes a very fundamental principle and kind of takes it a step further in a way that you might not initially. He has the highest winning streak of any basketball coach ever. But the most interesting thing is winning was not something he often talked about to his players. Winning to him was actually the result of the personal effort that you put into a game every single time. 100% effort, full commitment to the team, to yourself, and to just doing your best. That's it. One of the most interesting things is that he did not let his players look at the scoreboard. In fact, he was more upset with his team when they won a game, but he knew that they weren't putting in 100% effort. He was more upset with his team when they won and didn't put in 100% effort than when they lost and gave their all and played their hearts out. That's the kind of philosophy that he instilled in his players. Another thing, he also held his team to a very high moral standard. Basketball, playing basketball, winning championships was not where it stopped. He stressed the importance of good character, good sportsmanship, respecting the other team more than any other trait. I recommend you get his book called A Lifetime of Observations on and off the court. You can go through it, you can highlight it. So many fundamental leadership principles can be found in this book, as well as his very unique coaching style. Because I feel like a lot of people, when they're in competitive environments, they want to win. They wanna win more than anything. They wanna be the best person. And there's a lot of anxiety that comes from that. There's a lot of uh, game day, game day nerves and all that good stuff. And John Wooden would argue that you're here to play against yourself, to be the best person you can, and that winning has nothing to do with the amount of effort that you put in. When John Wooden's team was done with basketball, he made sure that when they walked off the court that you could not tell who won the game based on the expression of the teammates in the locker room after the game. Sometimes you can't always control the scoreboard. Sometimes somebody gets a lucky shot. Sometimes a bad call is made. That's okay. With his philosophy, he's more about, if you know you did everything you possibly could have done to prepare before, to play on the actual game day, then you don't need to worry about the outcome because you playing your heart out, being a good sport, having a good moral compass and being a man of man or woman of character is what is how you define your own winning and success. And there's a lot of good life lessons that he has taught me through his books and through his interviews and TED Talks and all of that, I'll share them with you, as well as a really, really, really cool tool that somebody has put up on his website for how to understand his leadership and team development. This is John Wooden's Pyramid of Success. I will leave a link to this in the description if you wanna check it out, download it, or print it off. He, every single level is building on itself, okay? For the entire team. And you can see how he defines each of these character traits. Every single trait is broken down based on his philosophy. So you can literally mimic this or implement this directly into your team. Notice how skill comes much further up in comparison to all of these other traits that you first need to develop. And eventually, as you develop these, you get conditioned. This is like physical and mental conditioning, endurance, so to say, skill, the proficiency, the team spirit is also a big one to make people feel part of an organization. And eventually you get poise and confidence that come from, um, uh, they come later in the building blocks, right? But you have to monitor confidence because he says that it can easily turn into arrogance, which leads to destructive behaviors that is counterproductive to the team. 
Same thing with poise. He's saying be yourself. Don't try to pretend to be what you're not. Oftentimes, people end up in a leadership position and they turn into somebody that they're not and they're not leading by their natural style because they think they have to be a certain way. But if you operate within the means of what constitutes good leadership, your own personality can completely accommodate that style that you have. And then when he talks about competitive greatness, this is a great mindset shift towards people who don't like competitive environments. Think of it this way. Having a real love for the hard battle instead of fearing it is what gives you the opportunity to be your best when your best is required. Of all the great competitors I've played for and against, they all share the joy in the struggle itself, the journey, the competition, the adventure. Competitive greatness comes from the desire and loving the process and loving the battle. You know, the tougher the battle, the better in a sense, because it calls upon all that you are and you can even push past those limits, which is something that, you know, you will never forget. But I love this quote. I'll leave you with it as well. He says, success is peace of mind, which is a direct result of self-satisfaction in knowing you made the effort to become the best of which you are capable. And that has nothing to do with winning. But oftentimes winning is a byproduct of achieving this peace of mind, knowing you did your best. And that's his philosophy. That's what John Wooden stands for. And if you have the faith to adopt this belief as well, you'll find that it's a much more fulfilling mindset to have instead of just trying to win against somebody else. So there were seven things that his dad made him write down and keep in his pocket pretty much until the day he died. And those seven, those seven things were the following. Be true to yourself. Help others. Make each day your masterpiece. Drink deeply from good books, especially the Bible. Make friendship a fine art. Build a shelter against a rainy day. Pray for guidance and count and give thanks for your blessings every day. He literally kept these in his pocket, no matter where he was or what he was doing, and he did his best to abide by that every single day, but he always had that reminder in his pocket. Again, great guy. I'll leave some resources if you wanna follow up with some of his content, and thanks for watching.